Would you like to know the role of a cloud architect or an enterprise architect in a proof of concept? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name's Mike Gibbs. I've been all types of IT architects for the last 25 years, mostly an enterprise architect. And today we're going to talk about the role of the enterprise architect or the cloud architect in a proof of concept. Now, a lot of people, when they want to become a cloud architect, they start thinking that the cloud architect or the enterprise architect is going to be the person on the keyboard doing a proof of concept. That is not our role. We have cloud engineers for this and DevOps engineers for this and many wonderful smart people that we work with. But in this video, we're going to talk about what we do as a cloud architect or an enterprise architect in a proof of concept. The first thing we actually do is we have to define the objectives and the success criteria of the proof of concept. So what are we trying to prove? So before we even think about it, we have to clearly define uh, the business and technology problems we're trying to solve with our proof of concept. We need to determine what's going to be in scope and uh, what's going to be out of scope and explicitly know that and map that out. We need to clearly define the measurable of outcomes. What are the performance benchmarks, for example, we're trying to achieve? Is it cost reduction? If so, what are we seeing? Does it improve scalability? And if so, how are we measuring that? So the first part of it is to define clear objectives and success criteria. Now, the next thing that the cloud architect or the enterprise architect has to do is part of the proof of concept process is gather stakeholder alignment. So we have to identify key stakeholders, meaning we're gonna engage with various business owners and technology teams and people from operations, compliance, and the executive sponsors. We're going to have to uh, communicate the value of what we're trying to achieve here. We're gonna have to articulate the expected benefits and get the buy-in that if it works, the customer's gonna be interested in it after the fact. So we're going to have to clarify who's going to participate in what part of the proof of contract and what their contributions will be. Now, after we know what we're trying to do, now we're going to plan the proof of concept. So we're going to have to document the requirements. And that means, you know, we need to know first what are the functional and non-functional requirements that we're trying to to support here. We need to create a timeline and obtain uh, outlines of maybe some key milestones, some deliverables and some deadlines. And we need to know what kind of resources it's gonna need because we're gonna have to bring in people to do this. Potentially technology, potentially people, and we're gonna need a budget for the proof of concept. Now at that point, now the role of the architect, like the cloud architect or enterprise architect, it was to assemble the team for the proof of concept. Because you're not going to build it yourself. You've got many more important things to be doing. So you may bring in some specialty uh, engineers that are going to do certain things inside of their areas of expertise. If it's a proof of concept that could take six months or longer, you might need some project managers to help you along the way. And typically a fair number of engineers to build out the proof of concept if it's going to be complicated, which you're trying to prove. Now, with this team, you're going to have to set up all kinds of communication channels. You're going to have meetings. You're going to have reports. You're going to have to collaborate. So that's going to be a lot of it. Now it's going to be the proof of concept. And here's what the architect does during the proof of concept. We manage the team. And often that means going on site if there's going to be a team on site and going there for the team, being there, standing beside the team, taking the team to lunches, taking the team to dinner, taking the team to drinks, uh, talking to the team members and seeing if they've got any challenges or obstacles and finding ways to remove them out of it so they can focus on the proof of concept. If you need to get better resources because something isn't working well and you need expert, expert, experts that you didn't think ahead of time, your role during the proof of concept is to reach out to management and escalate and get more resources that you need or more specific resources and you're there to make things are going smoothly take the client to lunch you're there to manage the process not touch the tech you need to be in this position where you can really help now the next thing we're going to do after we do the proof of concept is we have to mo monitor what happened uh, gather data and uh, specifically measurable data did we achieve what our goals were or did we not uh, and going back and forth, when we monitor the findings, we document the findings, we're going to keep communicating back and forth with our stakeholders. So we're going to make sure that we do these things. And if there's a list of issues, we're going to log them and potentially find fixes for them as well. Now, after it's documented, we're going to analyze the outcomes. We're going to see, did it meet the goals? And if not, what were the gaps between what we planned on achieving and what we actually did achieve? 
And then we're going to run some kind of business case cost benefit analysis to see if it makes sense to move forward with the architecture. So those are the kind of things that we typically do. Now, obviously, we'll be presenting these outcomes uh, back to key stakeholders at the client. We'll doing a fair amount of documentation we'll be turning in, and we may have charts, documents, presentations that go along with it. So you can see there is so much for the cloud architect or the enterprise architect to do in a proof of concept other than touching the technology itself. And that's why we typically aren't able to do this, and we need a team that specializes in doing this and doing this smoothly while we manage the process. Now, if you're looking to become a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or a security architect or an AI architect, in the description of this video, we have free architecture guides and we have a free architecture webinar that we do each week where we'll talk about the architecture role, the skills you need, and go over everything. And of course, you can ask us questions on these free cloud architecture or enterprise architecture, security architecture, AI architecture type webinars that we do. And that way we can guide you into the best architecture career. So please join me in a free webinar. And uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your cloud architect, enterprise architect, or security architect career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in a free webinar or another video. Take care.